Next session. This is uh, thickening and filtration. Our first speaker is Steve Merrin. He's a senior process engineer and dewater consultant at Senko Australia, based in Brisbane. Steve's been involved with solid and liquid separation since 1988. His extensive consulting experience in liquid solid separation has written several papers on centrifuge, thickeners, filters, and tailings, which have been presented at various conferences, including four at the PACE conference. Steve's been involved in numerous tailings and backfill projects, offering services and studies, pilot plants, designs, commissioning, and due diligence. He's currently working for a Senko Limited in the Brisbane office, and has recently worked on the Reco Dig and Spence projects. He's going to be talking about production management of coal and copper dry tailings. Um, can you hear me? Uh, morning, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Um, first of all, I hope you had a great time last night, a cracking time. And as you can see by those two buggers there, they lost a mate. And today, hopefully, you don't lose me and I can keep you entertained for a while. We're going to talk about a subject which is relatively large. There is so much to be spoken about. Um, but I'm going to try and focus on the two key factors that contribute to, the, to making uh, a dry tailings. So we'll run through the agenda very quickly. We'll talk about classification. We'll talk briefly moving to dry disposal. We'll rank some of the dewatering technologies. I'm going to talk about particle size distribution, touch extremely briefly on handling of tailings. We'll talk about the thickener changes that have occurred over the last two years, the filter changes, and then we'll go to some recommendations. So obviously tailings can be classified into three groups. Either you're containing the seepage, you're controlling the seepage, or there's a, a little bit of release of water based on that dewatering te technology that you use. But at the end of the day, you will always have some water release which you have to manage. Moving to dry disposal, there's a number of reasons. We've seen during the last few days some reasons, um, but basically dry disposal costs money. And I think they're the key overall the key factor is that it minimizes the potential for long-term pollution and instability of a tailings dam. So that's probably the number one driver. Obviously there's the maximizing of recycled water to the mill, and there's a, a host of other reasons, and these are all spelled out in the paper, so I won't address those right now. We basically rank the watering depending on the particle size distribution and in this case we look at the 200 micron and that will basically look at a gravity system like a thickener or something similar. We could also use hydrocyclones, we could use screens for the coarser fraction. We also then move on to something that's a little bit more difficult vacuum filtration using a disc or a belt um, if it's coal in australia they're using solid, uh, solid bowl centrifuges to dewater their coal fines and for pressure filtration everyone's looking at plate and frame pressure filters so the ease of dewatering depends on three factors in my opinion there's a host of factors but three Three of the main ones is that average D50 particle size, the percentage of minus 10 micron material, and most importantly, the composition. So you need to know what is the material you're trying to dewater. So let's pretend we have a mine face. He has your mine face. And we have lots of negatives. Lots of clay particles on that mine face. And for the next three minutes, my name is Mr. Smegtight. And I'm in the mine face. And I get mined. Boof. Boof. 
Boof. I'm 200 microns. And I get picked up and dropped, and I'm in a stockpile. And there's rain, there's weather on me. I get picked up again, and I go into a gyratory crusher. And I get bugging around a bit. Isn't that great? I'm now a hundred micron. I get stockpiled. I then move into a ball mill. A ball mill? I get bombarded with balls and I get rotated. And what happens to me? I reduce the size. I become a 50 micron particle. And I get introduced to water, first of all, in the mill. And then I get pumped out. And what happens to me? What happens to me? I'm delaminating. And then they've got this bright idea of what do they do? They send me to bubbles. I love bubbles. I'm not going to scull it. Bubbles? Oh, God. Jeez. I'm feeling depressed. Oh, God. Oh, I'm negative. I'm negative. I'm depressed. Pump, pump, pump. I'm 20 microns. They pump me again. Oh, I land up in water. I'm happy. I love water. This is my home. Whew. I'm taking on water. I'm going to get bigger. I'm going to swell. This is my environment. Give me your water. And I look around. My oh God, is everyone negative around here? They're all negative. I need something. Wow. She's positive. Women are positive. Come here, baby. Come here. And what do I do? I grab onto her. And let's get flocculated. And we get flocculated together. And we merge. We become one. And we get married. And what do we do? We settle down. And then what happens? We get to the bottom of the, after a few days, we get to the bottom of the thickener. And what does she do to me? I want a divorce. She divorces me. And suddenly I'm all alone again. God, and now I'm upset. And so I get thrashed around again. And I end up in the tank, and what do they do? They pump me, 12 bar pressure. And I get squeezed, and they release me. Whew. That was good. God. And then what they do? They hit me with air. They give me a blowjob, not a blowjob, but they, they, they hit me with air. An air blow. And then they release me. And then I had to go a call blow. Boom. God, what's happening? I'm getting a little bit frustrated. And so I decide, let me find myself an aperture. And I find that aperture. And along the way, I've lost a couple more. And now I become 10, 5 micron. And I find an aperture. And I think, oh. This is great. I'm in an aperture and I relax. Oh God. But then I happens, I get pressurized again with more water. 
And as more water comes in, I swell. And as they dry me, I contract. So I swell, I contract. I swell, I contract. And I put put in jail. My aperture is my jail. And there I stay for a while. God, I'm going to make sure that your filter is problematic because you have put me through hell, crushing, bormeling, depression. You broke up my marriage. Now you want me to be a favor to you? Forget it. So, woo! Luckily, the face where we mind has got some pals. We've got Mr. Elmanite, we've got Mr. Vermiculite, we've got Mr. Kaolinite. So there's a host of misters around. And guess what? Not all of them are the same as Mr. Smectite. So what we, did I jump ahead there? What we've seen is that the principal point I'm trying to get across is that the clays are different and they're all going to react differently, right? But we have to understand those clays. Otherwise, we won't be able to manage. So, let's just make sure. So the time the particle takes from, from the face to the end result, we see a lot of de delamination where we can create small nano-sized clay particles and they become our problem. Okay? We have to address those. In cold tailings you could use bell press, you could use plate and frame. For me the primary difference is obviously the cost. The plate and frame will get you a lot of moisture for sure. But countries differ. In Australia, they only use bell press filter. In South Africa, they only use the plate and frame. And for good reason. And that reason is bell presses use coagulants and flocculants. And they end up in the water. And when that water recirculates back to your mill, flocculants and reagents can be problematic with regard to flotation. So a big driver there is to look at your flotation. In copper tailings, you get some pictures here. You use plate and frames. This is a recent picture of uh, some presses in, in, in Queensland on a gold application on, on tailings. So we can do a few things. And what's really happened over the last few few uh, years or two years is, is they've tried to manipulate things for example by introducing changes to the flow sheet and one of the changes is introducing um, a coarse particle flotation on the top left there you see the, the actual cell and basically what happens is uh, the micron from that particular cell is increased so instead of being the 60% the minus 70 micron you're up at the 200 micron, all right? And that's a different animal. And so some of the copper concentrators have included the coarse particle flotation for a couple of reasons. One, um, lower uh, 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 milling cost because e energy is your biggest cost. Two, you, you basically can get higher tonnage through your plant the coarser you, you grind. Um, and then obviously the, the, the advantage is now for us to say, guys, You've changed your flow, sheets, your flow sheet. How can we change our tailings dewatering method? So we can take the coarse particle flotation and we can basically put it across a screen. We can put it across horizontal bell filter. We can put it across a combination like where minerals are doing, a, a screen cyclone. There, there's quite a few things you can do on that course particle, you can get down to a 13% moisture on, on that plus 200 micron. You've just got to know how to do it. Okay. So let's get back to the nitty gritty. Let's get back to the second half.
is particle size distribution, which is a key factor. So I'm going to show you a few graphs here. The first graph is a copper tailings, and what we can do with this particular material, we can use it in a cyclone because it is relatively coarse. All right? You can see there, it's, I can't see. It's relatively coarse. And so for this particular material, we can hydrocyclone it, and we can deposit it and stack it, not a problem. But the problem is, the same mine produced another tailing sample, and guess what? This one has a tail to it, and the tail contains the clays, right? And so for this one, you've, you've got to try and understand how are we going to dewater this? And for this particular application, they dewatered down to 35% moisture and it became a sloppy material. And that was because of the clays. All right. And then on the third one, this is a sulphide mineral. And guess what? It's actually a, a, a finer particle size. However, it didn't have clays. And when they used the exact same filtration mechanism or technology, they got to 18% moisture. So one has to understand that the composition of the material played a significant role in these dewatering applications. The next two are coal-related, and obviously the coal-related one, the one on the far right, we've got fines, We've got smeg tight, and we have to then address the best technology for that application with respect to the whole gambit. And that, the whole gambit is the holistic approach from dewatering, transport, right to deposition. And then finally, the last graph is that of coarse particle flotation. And as you can see, the particle size distribution has moved right to your far left hand side and we have a much coarser particle and that is much easier to handle when you're up at 200 micron plus and that's been a great advantage across the board not only for for the milling and the concentrators but for tailings as well so let me go back quickly guys i have seen particle size distributions that sometimes end at the 50 mark. Guys, if I ever see a particle size distribution that ends at the 50 mark, you are going to jail. You will be locked up like that smeg tight and go to jail because you haven't addressed the full issue. The full issue is how much is in that fine fraction? If you ignore that, guys, you're going to jump. Okay. Obviously, there's three areas of handleability, tra trafficability, and stability that all have to be looked at. There's various tests that you can do. I'm not going to go into the Attenberg limits, but obviously they have to be addressed. We'll talk about some, 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 some advancements. Obviously, high compression thickness can only go up to a diameter of 60 meters. And the reason being is we haven't made a, a drive big enough to accommodate and, and basically look after that high yield stress material, all right? The problem with a thickener is you don't know what the yield stress is because the sample that you take outside of the thickener is not representative of what's happened inside the thickener. But nonetheless, F.L. Smith have got to 16.4 million newton meters on their talk. The other great uh, uh, factor is recently, I think Andrew Vietti brought out a paper and indicated, guys, we can't use k-factors anymore. So what they we're using now is the the maximum operating torque, and we multiply it by a factor of two or whatever the factor is. And interestingly, when you do the calculation we are way over 600K on the K factor. We're obviously getting higher underflow densities. Let me say why, why it's important. 
because for every 1% solids in your thickener underflow loss, every loss of 1% in your thickener underflow, you're going to lose between 2 and 4% on the performance of your filter. Okay? So, the thickener is as important in dewatering as the filter. If you don't get your thickener right, your filter will suffer. Okay, we found that across the board. There's been changes in feed wells and there's been new control philosophies, etc. I won't touch on that. I will touch a little bit on, on filters. I worked on, the, on, on a project as mentioned, the Spence project, and here the Demi Press has got to an absolute massive size, 2,788 meter squared area. 141 plates, the plates are 4.2 meters by 4.8, I think it is, massive, right? We were never at that scale before. We've also, on some applications, moved our, our feed pressure higher to 21 bar. So there's a significant improvement in some applications when you get the higher feed pressure. Obviously, the, the, pre, the, the filter press um, availability is much higher because now they can do some maintenance outside of the filter press, pick up five or six plates, and basically install them. Our availability, when we do the calculations, we're typically 85%. Uh, let's save a bit in our design criteria, but now we can go to 90% with a little bit more confidence. Okay. On the horizontal belt filter, George International have, in, have included a, a Viper roller. And a Viper roller is a vibration type mechanism that changes the dynamics of the cake. For those who are theor theories like dewatering, your cake movement and the expression of water out of your cake is enhanced when you change the actual cake movement, so to speak. And obviously, the, the last point I have here is that test work comparing actual laboratory results has proven that large installations achieve similar to better results than the laboratory. We were always concerned that the laboratory could not represent the real thing, but now we're getting, we're seeing more representative, closer results. So in conclusion, guys, there's a number of advantages for dry disposal. Review your particle size distribution. More importantly, you're going to manage it, understand your clays and the composition of your material. You can manipulate your particle size. I think that's where I'm going to on my next paper to say, guys, what can we do to change the dynamics in the thickener and in the filter? And there are things we can do. Equipment is getting larger and then keep high compressions to a diameter of 60 meters. So, let me just say, two minutes. Um, Johnny, Johnny comes back and he's gung-ho. He's really gung-ho. He's taken the sample from the face. He's done the test work and he walks in and says, here's my report, Steve, please read it. I said, what happened? I got the sample from the face. I sent it to the vendors. They did the test work, the thickener test work, the filter test work. And now I've sized my thickener and I'm all happy. Yahoo! I've got it going, guys. Steve, can you, can you please consult on this and, and review the report? I look at the report. God, Johnny. Johnny, here's your report. Thank you very much, guys. Okay. Thanks for what might have been the most entertaining presentation for the session, Steve. But we actually are a bit over time, so we don't have time for questions right now, if that's okay. But I'm sure Steve will be keen to talk to you after. Thanks, Thanks again. Guys. So let's give him another round of applause. Thank you.